Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com with another story showing how nothing the press talks about has anything to do with reality. Ten years ago today, Jeffrey Mitai of Kenya won the Boston Marathon in world record time. He broke the old record by nearly a minute and broke the course record by nearly three minutes. This was one of the most impressive athletic performances in history. But two years later, several weeks before the race was to be run, experts predicted that global warming was going to slow the runners down. They said, since 1924, winning times for the Boston Marathon have grown steadily faster. Winning times may nonetheless slow in the future as the climate of Boston continues to warm. This is a fairly typical climate science study. They ignored the existing trend and relied on speculation about the future. Let's look now at the actual data. Blue Hill is the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Boston. The number of April 70 degree days there peaked 80 years ago in 1941. And over the past decade, they've dropped sharply. Same story with the average maximum April temperature. Temperatures there have dropped sharply over the past decade. And it's the same story for the entire United States. Over the past decade, April afternoon temperatures have dropped rather sharply, as has the number of warm April afternoons. The warmest April in the United States occurred in 1977, near the peak of the Ice Age scare. And the hottest Boston Marathon occurred 45 years ago when temperatures were over 90 degrees. Spectators were spraying the participants with garden hoses to keep them from overheating. The November 1976 issue of National Geographic was largely devoted to global cooling. They said the temperatures dropped about half a degree Fahrenheit since 1940. England's growing season shrank by 9 or 10 days, and sea ice had returned to Iceland's coast after more than 40 years of virtual absence. So the hottest Boston Marathon was associated with global cooling. The author of this article suggesting that Boston Marathon times were going to slow down had no scientific basis to what he was saying. The predictions relied entirely on baseless speculations about the future. But a few weeks later in 2013, the Boston Marathon did have a big problem. One of the immigrants whom Barack Obama would have described as being a young dreamer blew up an improvised explosive device, killing three people and injuring hundreds. This led to all of Boston being locked down. It was the first test of a large-scale lockdown in America, and it was very successful. Government convinced people that depriving them of their civil rights was for their own good. And that's become a very familiar theme over the past 13 months. And then, quite predictably, the press corps decided to make a rock star out of the bomber. On May 5, 2013, the front page of the New York Times featured this pretty picture of the bomber. And Barack Obama drew a red line in the sand for Syria, which he immediately let them step over without consequence. Rolling Stone took the glorification of the bomber even further. In the same issue which they reported from the front lines of climate change, they made a real rock star out of the terrorist by putting him on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone! Normally, the Boston Marathon is held the third Monday in April, which would have been two days from now. But it's been canceled this year because the state is now into their 56th week of the two-week lockdown to flatten the curve. And it's been snowing in Boston this week, so I don't think global warming would have been a huge problem for the runners if they were allowed to run. However, you can never be too careful about coronavirus. While hiking this morning west of Cheyenne, Wyoming, I saw these two women from Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm not sure why they drove an hour and a half to come hiking in Wyoming, but I've been seeing quite a bit of that. I took this picture with a long telephoto lens from about half a mile away. She was wearing a mask and they had the dog on a leash. Based on the fact that there weren't any other tracks in the snow or cars, I'm quite certain I was the only person within several miles of these women. Yet they had the dog on a leash and she was wearing a mask. These Colorado residents are quite well trained to be chained and muzzled. Temperatures were around 0 degrees Fahrenheit when we started hiking this morning in the middle of April. Kyrie and Toto didn't find a lot of global warming today. We've been having a rather impressive cold snap here in Cheyenne over the past three months. 
Based on the current weather forecast, it looks to me like we're going to have the fewest number of days over 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius since 1929, and much of the country is experiencing similar cold. Mid-afternoon at Taos Ski Valley, New Mexico, the temperature was 0 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees Celsius. That's incredibly cold for April, and they're having lots of snow. This was a webcam picture taken there this afternoon. Children aren't going to know what the tops of trees look like if the snow keeps falling. The current forecast is that every state except for about six or seven is going to get snow before the end of the month. Once again, that's pretty impressive for April. And it's very cold in Europe too. France had a record freeze this week which destroyed much of their wine grape crop. Let's look now how the press is reporting on all of this cold. This is the upcoming issue of Time Magazine. They say that the earth is on fire. As I said at the beginning of this video, nothing the press is talking about has anything to do with reality. At this point, it's all propaganda all the time. 100% across the board fake news. They cover up the real stories and instead talk about complete nonsense. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this insanity for the past 13 years. You can visit him and Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.